Hey, folks, it's Lindsay Huddle from SBS back in the building over at Old Refer Academy. You may say, where is that? It's on Southfield and uh, Outer Drive, the former Benedictine. And I'm back to, one, introduce to some and uh, reintroduce to others a staple in the Detroit basketball scene as Coach Ray Reeves. How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. How you doing? So good to see you. We had uh, some great conversation offline. Fired up. The energy is there. And for those who don't know, he's back. <laughs> Coach, this literally is a basketball factory. You have multiple stations going all at one time. It's like one of those camps people will pay and wait weeks to get into, but this is a daily occurrence for you over here. Yeah, every time. Like, you know what I'm saying? I got some of the best coaches in the city, in my opinion. So we all in here working, so it ain't just me. You know, we talked about it earlier that your kids love to work. How do you get these guys to be in a mindset where they can enjoy this? And let's be honest, that's not what a lot of young people are really into right now. I mean, we make it fun. We do our conditioning, but this is our conditioning. We ain't just running suicides, putting the basketball in your hands. So we kind of make it fun for them. Get low, get low, get low. Hey, Coach, your numbers are like this on a daily basis? Yeah. Wow. Wow. And then I see guys with great leadership, Herschel Marion from Hamtramck and others. What does it mean to have these guys in the building with these younger guys on the come up? Um, just because they want to work. I don't have no problem with whatever school you come to. If you want to work out, I have no problem with that. Come on up here and get your work in. Because the main thing is trying to get these kids out of Detroit and go to school. That's what it's really about. So is that your response to my next question when people have this concern about people trying to take players and steer players away and things like that? Nah, I'm not trying to steal their players. That kid is a senior. I'm trying to help him get into school. Yeah, I understand. Why do people not look at it from that standpoint, Coach, and look at it from the standpoint of uh, ownership of a player? Or you know, My thing is, if you're doing what you're supposed to do, you don't have to worry about that. If you're doing what you're supposed to do and you're working hard, that kid will realize that. And you don't even have to have that discussion. Mm -hmm. I hear you. Get low, get low. There you go. It just got announced today that Chauncey Willis Jr. is Mr. Basketball. What's your thoughts on that? Big for the city. Love that kid. George Ward doing a great job over there. Great job. Chauncey had a heck of a year. That's great. They need to get low. They need to get low. They're not getting low on that move. Tell them that, though. Hey! Right here? Back. <laughs> back. Talk about um, the time off. You said you had about five years uh, to step away from the game and unknowingly with the great leadership here at Old Redford Academy. Uh, now you're back uh, doing great things with our guy Mike Douglas. You got the guard play piece going on young people working, but you're actually coaching and had a pretty good season this first time back. Yeah, I, I thought I was done. Um, I was doing for five years. Uh, honestly, didn't think I missed the game. But once we started making moves as far as administration and then once Miss Moore took over, um, I felt pretty good about where the school was headed in the program. And then me and her talked. I start coaching again, and the rest is history. I love it again. Yeah. You know, when you talk about, you know, us being involved with um, – urban education, or just education in general, general, how we can get to the point from a coaching standpoint, teaching standpoint, administration, we can get burned out. Right. So you step away. So can you say that you witnessed having that time away to really completely shut those thoughts down has helped you be more accessible to be able to come back? Yeah, I can say that. Um, going on the administration part of it, I can see where our young people need help at. Um, of course, coaching is like being a father figure to – a lot of kids out here, but on that administration level, I reach way more than the 30 kids that's in my program. Um, I've also seen the change as far as in the game with the parents and, you know, that part of it, I realized, like, they need more mentors than anything. It's bigger than basketball to me. Every kid is not going to the NBA. Mm -hmm. Every kid is not playing Division One, but you still need to be able to reach that young man and make him successful out here in our neighborhoods. Yeah. You know, we talked a lot about your experience as well as you having a collegiate experience, which kind of opened your eyes to a lot of things. Talk about the challenges we're facing when we're getting uh, guys with great records, but when it comes down to the young people transitioning to the next level, it's not like that. How do we put that nicely? Um, I think one of the things that people get caught up in is winning basketball games. I think um, it's no knock against – Anybody out winning there? Winning is important. Winning is important. But to be honest, it's so easy to win now on this level because it's so many different schools now. Everybody, mm. you know, when I came up, I was going against Ward. I was going against Kelso. I was going against 
Johnny Ghost, and I was going against Mark White. I was going against Steve mm-hmm. Benny White. Those guys mm-hmm. were titans. It was yeah. no off nights. And it's no Mount Rushmore plus right. something. There's no man. knock against anybody, even Flowers. I'm sorry, Flowers was in there too. Shout but to even Flowers. now, it's yeah. like they let anybody coach. You know, and again, it's no disrespect, but well, people gonna feel some kind of way, yeah. but we're here to get to the part of how do we get the best for our young people as it relates to long term opportunities. And you said something we were talking earlier. If you got a kid in here in the gym, the expectation to the parents, the return on investment said, we should be able to help you take your game to the next level. D1, D2, D3, or as, uh, as our guy DC says, D3. Right. Um, my thing is, like, if you have a kid that's in your program three or four years, and at the end of that, you can't say, okay, this kid is going here, then what are we doing it for? Um, every kid is not Division One. Every kid is not Division Two. But that's NAIA school. That's JUCO school. People, but they turn their nose up at them so many times, it seems. Oh, but that's NAI. It's always said, like, with this, you know, this thing. I think that, again, that's when you had those reality checks. That's when you really talk to this kid and be like, yeah, you can love the game, but this is not for everybody. Like, Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three. it's an honor just to play this game. You know, if you got somebody paying for you to go to school, you got to take advantage of that. Don't matter where it's at. Right. To me. You know, we had some offline conversations. You talked about you gave me a peek into your programs in the past and how you had those keep it real sessions. You traveled and would present yourself in front of some teams that are actually just playing, you know, in the NCAA. And those coaches would give feedback. Talk about what that was like to be able to kind of give a very realistic perspective to your players as far as what it takes to take it to the next level. Um, well, first thing I think is you got to be honest with the kid. Like every kid when you talk to, he'll tell you Syracuse and kentucky and all that but what i did is we traveled a lot uh, we went to those summer leagues and were, summer you invi- were you invited to go see those those places or yes you- yes but that just comes from relationships and sometimes i would just make a call like look i need to get in your summer league mm-hmm. and then if you coming from detroit naturally the coaches want to talk to you anyway so you take the kid down there and then you build those relationships and then a lot of times the coaches will talk to the kids and be honest with them like look yeah you want to come here but these are the reasons why we're not recruiting you. And I think you have to have those. Be honest with yourself. You can't tell no kid he's going to Kentucky and he. Yeah. Y'all fall off. Everybody off. Let's go. Coach. Yeah. I know you got your guys going. Tell me what you guys what you guys are going through right now. Just working on some two ball dribbling. Um, if you can't handle the ball today, you can't play. So that's something we do every day. Just work on dribbling. And I noticed they jump better. right into it, too. You know, it's like they know the drill. They know what they need to do. Yeah, constantly. We do this every day. Every day. So Everywhere. are you looking to be guard heavy, or you want all your players to have guard skills? They all guards. Everybody that's in here is a guard. Just because you 6'4", you a guard. Ain't no college coach recruiting anybody 6'4 at the center or four. So if you ain't handling the ball, you can't play these days. comment that you made how you said yeah you got invited you built relationships but there was a part that said that you pretty much took the initiative as a coach cold calling saying hey man um here we are we want to come down and do you think that's lost on a lot of coaches when it comes down to just reaching out without question because what people don't understand on the college level they can't come down to your games like that they get fired for losing on the next level so they don't have time to keep coming running down to Detroit, Detroit to recruit kids so any chance you got to get them on that campus, they love that. So if you ever really think about it, a lot of coaches really don't come out into state tournament time. Mm-hmm. You might see them once, but you're going to see a lot of coaches during state tournament time. And that time. makes sense because in state tournament time, there are, there's a great chance. I'm looking at the best players because of what's happened. What about that comment, uh, just do what you got to do, they'll find you? I don't really believe too much in that. I think that as a coach, too, you still got to work. That just playing, it it's, it could be a kid over here playing and scoring 35 points a game. But if don't nobody know, ain't nobody going out there. You think that's a cop-out type step? Yes, without thing? question. You still have to make that phone call. You still got to send that DVD out, send that tape out. You still got to make that extra push to get that kid out there, especially if you feel like you have one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's lost on my people. So once the word gets out that you're back, what do you think the response is going to be with Reeves hitting the court again? Oh, 
I'm out working. That's all I can say. Yeah. They know I'm out working, and I'm going to do what's best for the kids. As you can see, we still in here still on a Sunday. We're going every day. Yeah. I want to work out. We're going to go every day. Thank you.